Hey y'all, what's going on? It is me, Guillotine. Welcome back to another HD's Battle Ruins video. I know that it's been ages since my last video. I won't bore you with the details, but some of you know that I have started a journey to becoming a game developer. Um, I've been working on some projects. It's just been taking up a lot of my time. Hopefully, I'll have something soon to maybe show y'all, get you excited about. But for now, um, we're going to talk just strictly about HD's Battle Ruins. Today, I wanted to talk about team games. I prefer 1v1, but I know that a lot of the community, um, especially the American and the CIS community, um, prefer team games, and I play a lot of them um, just because I can get my dailies done, I can try out new deck compositions, um, and I'd be lying if I said they weren't fun. But lately I've been losing, and losing a lot, and I think a lot of people have. Um, and the way team games usually go is... You either steamroll the other team or the other team steamrolls you. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with just poor team play. And so today I'd like to give a few little tips about how to be a better teammate. The purpose of this is not to tear anybody down, um, but hopefully maybe just to provide some insight and get some better team games. Rule number one is to know your map. Know where the resources are, know where people like to set up and rush, um, set up proxies and stuff like that. Oasis of Blood is a 2v2 map. Um, there's a ton of resources on it. It is huge. I think it is the biggest map or maybe the second largest. You do have to watch out for um, these little spots kind of right here. Sometimes players will set up like a balloon rush or an imp rush right there. Um, and so yeah, you've always got to check that. But Swamp of Silence here is a 2v2 map that you are not guaranteed to start on the same side as your teammate. You could, sure, both be on the bottom or left or right, but you could also be split like this. And this should affect your strategy as well. It's like, if you're on the same side, I feel more comfortable being aggressive. Whereas if you're split, I think you need to play a little bit more defensively because the pressure can kind of come from either side. Rule number two stay in your lane and i mean that physically and metaphorically um for a good example of this i have the map graveyard it's a 3v3 map when i play this map though it tends to get so weird and disorganized um so i wanted to break down real quick a couple of things one if you were not this person right here you do not get this right here please if you are this person do not come over here and take this from me. If you do that, I'm going to put a barracks down and block you from it. Or if you happen to get it down before I can do that, I'm literally going to steal your gas. Because the whole purpose of this is to give your middle person a safe place to expand. These two spots right here are also for the middle person, but they're a bit more exposed and they're harder to defend early on. So these three are the natural expansions, and therefore the person closest to them. Also, if this is you, don't make this your first expansion. Please come here, and please don't skip this one and come up here, unless you are confident that you can hold this off. But back to the first point, when this gets stolen, it puts the entire team behind. It's the worst possible thing that you can do on this map is to steal this position if you are not this person right here. Basically, you take a three versus three and you turn it into a one versus five because this person is now playing against their teammates. Now, physically staying in your lane, what I mean is if you are this person, it is your responsibility to expand this way and then to get to this edge as fast as humanly possible. Same goes for this side. You want to take those two, you want to come up here, and you want to get those two. If you're in the middle, you come down here, you come down here, and both of these are for you. And when it comes to attacking, you go straight up the middle. You attack from the side. And you attack from the side. You should only be coming out of your lane if, say, 
all three are pushing down the left side, then you've got two choices to make. This person is getting canceled out. There's no way that they can f fend off a three versus one. So we have to decide, do we have what it takes to come up here and defend? If you have any doubt that you can um, successfully defend and then push, better to go on a counterattack. Better to sweep around this right side. Um, and which is going to kind of get into the next point of knowing when to counter. But um, just strictly about staying in your lane, you should never leave your lane unless it's an emergency. And, and that also applies for 2v2. Going back to Oasis of Blood... Um, you know, if you were here, this is yours, this is yours, this is yours. If you are over here, please do not make your first expansion coming all the way over here and taking this. Why would you do that? Um, I mean, sure, maybe you have the advantage of, like, having a base, like, hidden if you get taken out quick, but, like, one, you're behind because... It took you a while to walk your worker down there. Two, your teammate is now behind because you're taking one of my sources of income. For me to then break even, I have to go and steal one of yours or try to quickly steal one of my opponents. Which could be a good thing, but it also does the same thing for your opponents. They can come and steal all this. So, it, it really makes zero sense. Um, it is a map that is very friendly towards macro. Um, some players do rush on this map, um, so just check for it, but you should be quickly expanding. This is lane number one, and this is lane number two. You're both responsible for the middle, but the middle has these bodies of water that kind of funnel it into one of either lane. If you can get up and steal a base, that's great. I've seen people start with stealing a base and then trying to work backwards. Um, if you pull it off, it, it works, but it's it's not going to work most of the time. Um, it's funny and it happens, and but it it's not it shouldn't be your main strategy on this map. If you want to be a good teammate, start here, get your natural, get your third. Always scout your third well before you get it. Make sure there's not like a balloon rush there. Get your fourth. And then if you can, then you start stealing and attacking. Hopefully that makes sense about staying in your lane. Swamp of Silence, though, is a map where there really is no lanes. Um, and it's a very dynamic map because the set positions are not straight. Um, you heard me say earlier that that's going to affect how I approach the map. Um... If we're both on the bottom, I feel very confident with being aggressive like towards this person to my left um, or to my right. Um, I guess if you wanted to define lanes, it's going to be the enemy that's closest to you. It's going to take me a lot longer to go across the map, and then it's going to also leave my backside exposed. The middle of this map is highly valuable. However... Please do not do this. If this is you, do not bypass this and come straight down here and start building towers and trying to... Again, it will work sometimes if it's not scouted, but if your opponent is even remotely competent, they're going to scout that, and they're going to know that you're investing everything down here. They're either going to drop ship, go around, take you out from this side, or they're going to... So... Here, let's get some colors in here to make it make a little bit more sense. So, um, this is you. You've come down here and you've taken this. Your teammate, which will be purple right now, has done this and done the smart thing and taken their natural. So, they're kind of, you know, catching up to you, I guess, um, as far as the middle goes. Your opponent have also hunkered down and have started building an army. Um, and so what's going to happen is 
you've invested a whole bunch of money into locking the middle down, right? Um, but they are going to both push out at max supply, destroy everything that you've worked towards, and then push straight up into your base where you are now behind because there is, again, nothing here. There's nothing. Um, and so now your teammate, who is ready to healthily expand into the middle, doesn't have enough to, one, defend you from two max supply armies because your army is going to be smaller since you've invested so much into defenses, but also now your opponents have the army and the cash flow so that they can retake the middle. Suddenly everything you've invested in now goes to your opponent and they've come in, they've killed you and they've taken this and it leaves your teammate out on an island. Let's stay on Swamp of Silence. Let's pretend that we're split and let's pretend that our teammate is getting double rushed. So when should I come and help my teammate? And when should I come off and attack? You should only help your teammate if you are 1000% confident that you can get over here, defend him from both opponents, and then come out and push one of these two. And you have to be able to do all of that. If you just defend, then your opponent has won the engagement because they can rebuild their army and just send another wave. You have to be able to respond. If it looks like at all, hey, my teammate's going to get overrun, your only hope is to come this way and attack the closest enemy to you. Because you have to be able to do the math here. They're sending a bunch of hounds, rangers, spearmen. Okay, well, he doesn't have money to invest in defenses, clearly. He's investing a lot of money. Maybe I can get in there and take one of these players out. And, you know, your teammate goes down, but also this guy goes down. And so now it's a 1v1. That's your, your best bet here. If your teammate's getting rushed by one opponent, what do we do? Um... Your teammate has to be able to defend 1v1. Um, I know players get mad if they're getting like attacked and like your teammate doesn't just run and send all of their army over here to help. Unless it's something specific, like say I'm getting balloon rushed. Um, put some little balloons here. Say I'm getting balloon rushed. Or I don't have like shadow fighters or something that can kill those balloons. If you have a shadow fighter or something send a couple shadow fighters don't send your whole army just send what's needed to help defend this because what will happen and you can use this to your advantage if it's the opposite if i send everything over here homie down here can come and counter and take you out and so while you were in a good position you were doing great, your economy's good, you're building your army up. Now you're going to be the one that dies first because you've left yourself entirely exposed. Let's say now that your teammate is solo rushing. What should you do? One, it's good to play in contrast in this situation. If you your teammate is being hyper-aggressive, it's better to at least have an insurance policy. I'm really big on I don't rush at all unless I have an insurance policy. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but if your teammate is just push, 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 you know, hunker down a little bit, get an army. Also, what you can do is walk your army down this way and just park them right here because eventually this person's going to come out and do something. They're going to try to counter, they're going to, um, try to defend or for whatever reason attack you maybe they think you're the one that attacked um, and if you have this army right here you can cut them off right here um, 
And even if you lose that fight, you're stopping them from being able to help out their teammate. Hopefully, it's, it's making a little bit of sense now of when you should counter, when you should defend. Moving on to maybe the final point. For the love of all things good and holy, please don't tower rush. <laughs> um, it's corny. It's got a low win rate. It's not fun to play against, and it's not fun to use. And especially in team games, you're screwing your teammates. If I'm playing with someone that goes for like a tower rush or some sort of proxy, um, I pretty much I just know we're gonna lose. I accept that fate, um, or it's going to be a uphill battle. Because what happens is, you know, this person, uh, you know, derps along, starts putting down a few towers. Suddenly, this person and this person are going to have to come and help out. Um, if they're going to come and help out if this person doesn't already blow it up themselves. And then back home, you have nothing. You have invested everything into this all-in annoying little cannon rush or whatever you go down you or you get frustrated and your tower rush doesn't work out so you either rage quit and leave your teammates on in a 3v2 or you know they end up countering and it's a 3v2 because you have not built up enough to sustain an attack um just please quit doing it um and in case you're interested, we didn't do this map for staying in your lane. Um, this map is a little bit different than the other 3v3 map. There's less resources on it. Um, and so quickly, your responsibilities are this, this, and this. The middle's responsibility is this, this, and this. And the other edge is the same as the bottom you've got here, but you've got here a really close one and then this one. Um, you have to lock down those edges. If you don't, you lose. It's pretty basic. Let's see. This right here is a popular spot for people to set up balloon rushes or mini dragon rushes, um, amp rushes. So just check it. I usually, if I'm... Um, say this pink player down here i'll usually walk a worker down over to this spot and check it out before going to the corner and start building um, anyways hopefully these were helpful uh, i promised you some gameplay at the beginning so i've got two games for you so without further ado let's get into it so game one is a good example of how to handle a cannon rush whenever you get caught with your pants down um, i definitely did right here happens to the best of us and this is probably the toughest one to beat when it's cannons and watchtowers um, when I went to scout I only saw this guy coming out right here I didn't see the first two but I did notice that he had no gas no barracks or anything so I knew something weird was gonna happen I just didn't know when or where this is probably one of the more aggressive cannon rushes out there when you've got the cannons and the watchtowers it's very hard to beat because um, usually you would just, like this, hit an imp over there and, and start killing the cannons, but the watchtowers is going to kill all of that. And then our other opponent is also setting up a proxy and a tower of sorts. So right here, I send my Hellgate minions in and realize that I'm not going to be able to fight this cannon rush head on. It's just too much for what little I have. So I'm going to send some flyers around because if you do the math there, there's no possible way he's got anything back home. So I come in, kill as many workers as I can, trying to make it a 2v1 at least, but... The two watchtowers go up, I'm not going to be able to completely take them out at the moment, but I definitely did massive damage. Our other opponent, however, set up the proxy over here, but has never attacked, um, which is kind of weird. If you're going to do that, you should probably be applying some pressure, and my teammate is just kind of sitting around doing absolutely nothing. Those tanks could have come and cleared all of that out for me. 
And had his army been positioned a little bit better, he probably could have left everything else behind and still been able to defend. Both of our opponents went for very aggressive all-ins. I still don't know why this maroon player has not attacked, um, but if my teammate can defend this attack that's coming, we're going to be able to run this table here because none of them have anything back home to defend. Um, but I've got a feeling that I'm going to have to step up, do a little bit more than just take one of them out. So I sent a drop ship over to the opponent closest to me um, in his natural and just start expanding there and building my economy, keeping an eye, making sure that he doesn't have some stockpiled minerals and is going to be able to rebuild himself. Uh, and then right here, my teammate... Poor positioning and kind of just sitting there idle. I don't know if they're AFK or what, but um, he just gets steamrolled. And they're probably feeling pretty good right now. Um, I essentially got taken out earlier, so they think. And then Dark Blue is their army's dead and all of their economy is gone. So he probably thinks he just has to push in and finish me off, but I snuck over here, I'm rebuilding an army of my own, and now I'm going to wait until Red starts attacking this base, which is worthless to me now, um, other than the little bit of minerals that's left, and I'm going to counterattack into his base, because, again, I know because of math that Everything he has is invested in the proxy, and everything he has is invested in this army. There's going to be nothing back home. I don't even have to scout for it because mental math. Um, Red has taken out my castle um, by this point and realizes the game is not over. Um, so he checks right there, and he's going to push up, and he realizes I've rebuilt, obviously. Um, probably realized that as soon as he got attacked. And he's going to try and rush and destroy my castle. However, on the mini-map you can see, I've already started building two more castles. Um, so we get the win there, and you should probably stop doing cannon rushes. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. The next uh, game ended up being insane. Very fun to play. Um, I got paired with Yomi Yomi Naomi um, against Oso Goose and Upbeat Quartz. Also, this one was recorded in Game Review, so you get to see a little bit of my thought process, some of my mistakes, um, and you get the Fog of War effect, which I think makes for entertaining content. Um, I'm going for gas first, and um, a Hellgate rush, which you need gas for Hellgate, but if it was any other rush, I'd still go gas first, because it is an insurance policy for when it inevitably fails 7 out of 10 times, and even though I am scouting in my lane, it's also important to at least get eyes on what your teammate has eyes on if, if they're scouting, but he got tied up, so we're going to come back over here, try to put a barracks down to start my rush, but the watchtower blows it up. I couldn't see too much of what's going on. But um, I'm going for a second gas, something I don't often do. I'll usually go one gas, one barracks. But with this particular build, um, I really need the gas. And I stay on one base a little bit longer than I usually do. Um, and so that is the reasoning for going for another gas. The barracks goes down because it's highly possible that I'm getting proxied or rushed um, from somewhere, because all I saw was a tower, I didn't see any gas or anything, um, and so I still want to be a little aggressive and not wait for him to come to me, um, if you remember early in, earlier in the video, um, we are on the same side of the map, we're both on the bottom, so I feel like it's okay to be a little aggressive, so the plan I'm having right now is I'm going to send a unit over there and then I'm going to spawn a Hellgate outside of their base and then run everything in all together. Um, that way I can get some eyes on what's happening. I can maybe kill a few workers and I'm also going to start putting down my second castle. So I'm walking the Spearman over here. I have just enough minerals right now to put the Hellgate down. Um, now we just wait for all of them to come out be a little bit patient. Um, because it's a lot harder to kill 10 minions than it is to kill one at a time. Uh, meanwhile, back home, building workers from my original castle and sending them down to my natural. Um, and these guys should be just about done. 
This deck focuses heavily on damage per second, um, but the downside is it requires a lot of gas, so you can get behind. You have to be um, always in the driver's seat. So right here I'm sending in my minions, and what do I see? Three orcs, three barracks. Um, I know that the watchtower is there. So um, just mathematically, I know that he hasn't expanded yet. Um, given that it's less than three minutes into the game. Um, so my goal is to just take out these orcs. I'm going to stick and move right here. If you're good at micro, you can actually stick and move with spearmen versus orcs and never take a hit. So back to what I was saying about doing the math. There's three orcs there, so that's 525 plus three barracks at 150. So that's 975. Um, plus the watchtower, which is a thousand, and now he's sending more orcs. So we're up to about 1,200 minerals invested. There's no way at all that he has another base up, and I'm going to be able to continue to melt these orcs one at a time. So I decided it's time to push, um, and meanwhile, while I'm pushing, I'm going to keep staying ahead in economy. I'm going to go and walk a worker down to get ready to build castle number three. But as I'm pushing here, I realize that he has a skull rogue out, and I don't have an owl built. So I'm going to just fall back to my tower, hope that he follows me. Um, watchtowers have detection, so I should be able to pick them up and just keep on pushing. Um, so building up my army, getting ready for another push. Uh, there's that skull rogue. It is going to go down as well as this berserker here. Um, but Yomi Yomi Naomi, for some reason, decides to send their entire army over here. Um, so this is what I mean by you really should stay in your lane and don't send reinforcements unless it is... 1,000% necessary, and right here it just wasn't. But nonetheless, gonna keep pushing up into the top left, keep expanding, keep building army. I was pretty confident that I was going to be able to take them out on my own, but now with both of us, um, that's definitely going to happen. So we push up the ramp, a few more orcs are out, I'm just going to pull them down off the cliff with my hook. By this time, he could have healthily expanded, but there is a ton of barracks here, so that kind of tells me that even if he has, a lot of minerals have been tied up into this stuff. Um, but keep an eye on the minimap. The counter is coming. Uh, this is what I meant earlier on in the video. Also, Goose here could have gone to the aid of his teammate and probably lost his army all in one go because... Um, it would have been 2v1 or go on a very strong counter attack and try to turn this into a 1v1. Uh, but I'm not going to hyper focus on any of these fights going on around the map. I'm just going to come back home, double check on my economy, um, get my runes activated, and I'm going to just keep pushing on around the clock. Um, Yomi Yomi Naomi maybe should have went all the way home to defend, but... Right now, we're both smelling blood in the water, going to continue on the attack. We're about to completely take out one of our opponents, and then, effectively, it would be a 2v1 um, if Yomi Yomi Naomi can hold back home, which it isn't looking too great, but I'm not freaking out. Just keeping my eye on the minimap so I can see where the enemy army is. Um, there's space to expand now, so I'm going to do that because I'll start mining out um, some of my resources soon. I'm uh, taking a look down below. It looks like Yomi Yomi Naomi is going to have all of their buildings taken out, and um, the army of Oso Goose is going to be down there close to my third. So I'm going to spawn my Hellgate to get some minions ready. I don't want to get into a base trade. I quickly um, take out the castle that I was currently attacking and come back home. Uh, Oso Goose decides to call off the attack, go home and defend. Um, I notice it and so I'm going to try to cut his army off and I end up getting kind of awkwardly split and in a very unfavorable way. Um, I win the top very easily but down below um, all of those Voduns and Iron Pants plus the Blessing um, is going to prove pretty difficult and then he also smartly had his hounds on the high ground to come down. So my army gets 
kind of halfway wiped, but I'm still in it. I've got the economy. I'm just going to remax and, and keep pushing, keep expanding. Um, hoping that I can take this castle down, but I pull back. I don't want to lose my necromancers. Um, and so it's not going to go down. So I would say that's kind of a failed engagement for me. Um, and now I'm the one kind of with my back against the wall while I'm waiting for my army to remax. Um, also, Goose here is going to kind of stick and move and keep me going from top to bottom, um, which is very good micro on their part. And even though I'm getting kind of worked right now, this is why I just love Vodun so much. Um, they melt straight through big expensive units um, like a hot knife to butter. It's pretty great. I do wish that maybe they had a little bit more HP or a higher base attack, but they're still a load of fun. They're my favorite unit. Um, anyways... Not freaking out. I'm just going to rally troops to this fight happening here. I need to defend this base, um, which I do. Um, and I'm also making sure that I keep building workers. As You know, you don't want to have all your workers die and then you've already invested all of your money into an army because then you've got one shot at it. Um, so I'm going to come back down and attack the new money. I know that he is expanding down to where my teammate was. Um, and just, you know, they've been playing as long as I've been playing, so if my minerals are mining out, so are theirs. So to me, it makes no sense to push up into their main. I'm just going to attack their new investments. Um, him using that blessing right there, I didn't want to send my whole army in just yet. I just wanted to micro my necromancers away, get them to a higher ground, and uh, start spawning more minions. And then once the blessing was done, I was able to attack from the rear. Um, and I'm also going to use those necromancers to start killing workers at the bottom right. Um, again, manage the economy, build gas, build workers, keep it rolling. If you run out of money, you lose. I'm going to start rallying some troops to the top of the map since a lot of the action is happening down below. Um, this castle is going to go down. I'm going to try to save these necromancers, but I think that they're going to be toast, quite literally. Um, but since Oso Goose is focusing all of their army down below, now I'm going to break their ankles and attack from the top. And the cycle continues. Put down another castle. Build more workers. Um, replace your army. Keep an eye on your supply. I see all the army going up. Now it's time to go back down. Oh, he's starting a new castle. Let's put a Hellgate by it. Make sure it doesn't go up. The base all the way down at the bottom right is probably mined out by now. So this looks exposed. Let's see if we can pick it off. And that should about do it. Or at least I hope so. Um, Necromancer's here putting in work. Kind of cutting off that Iron Pants and some Vodoons. Uh, upbeat Quartz surrenders. But hats off for them staying this long. I can't tell you how many games I've played where my teammate gets eliminated early and then I run the table in 1v2 or 1v3 it and, uh, you know, they lost out on the trophies. I wish I would get extra trophies if my teammate quit before the match was over. Um, anyways, down here, these slayers are not in a good spot, but I think it's fine. If any of my castles are getting attacked right now, I want it to be that one because it's the one with minerals that has been up the longest. It's going to be the next one to get mined out. Um, but enough Slayers come out to where they do actually hold, and now I'm going to move in and take this castle. Even though my workers are getting killed on the way, I notice there's a whole bunch of Vodunes over this way. I'm kind of wondering at this point, like, where are you getting all this money from? But the map was pretty much split in half, so if I've got it, they've probably got it. Um... And now one of my newer castles is getting attacked, and I'm starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable, thinking maybe I was a bit overconfident. My supply is getting pretty low. Uh, maybe I've been floating too much money. Um, I've got 12 idle workers right now. Um, things aren't looking good for me. They got a little bit mismanaged there for a second, but this was kind of a sobering moment for me. I, um, I noticed the workers are idle. I'm kind of surveying where I can send them. I end up sending them to the very top and realize that I should probably invest a little bit more in my economy. So I'm going to get the workers rolling. Um, I have a whole bunch of gas. 
So I'm going to get some more necromancers and try to save some minerals um, to build workers or spearmen. I do notice that this almost untouched patch of minerals um, right here, which was one of Oso oh, Goose's natural expansions, I'm going to occupy that and realize, you know, the game doesn't hinge on me taking the one that I've got denied a few times. I can just move right in here and the majority of production right now is happening all in the bottom right and I will soon have a foothold on the bottom left which is where I started, the top left, and the top right. And I pretty much just have to play contained defense from here on out. Don't, um, don't get too ahead of myself don't let him win this fight and start countering um just keep the pressure on there's nowhere else that he can really attack me from other than that position so the cycle continues take care of my economy make sure that this space is going to be protected a few barracks down for production come back it looks like my um, army is doing a good job holding them off um, and we might actually finally get to take this castle down which would put us in a an amazing spot um, the castle does go down and um, that's gonna be it GG y'all that was a really fun one if you sat through this whole video thank you so much um, hopefully it was helpful and educational for you or at least you got to see some fun gameplay but uh, continue to like and subscribe and all that and I will holler at y'all next time later